At this point, when I run it, it pops up one time to confirm. You're about to delete. Confirm. And if you click Cancel, then you get the console output that says they changed their mind. That should be enough. We don't need to do anything special for the user that pops up to, to display anything. So um, the next level inside of this true they wish to delete so okay we'll go back inside of this true case we will ask again we could do confirm again uh, but just to show you that there's so many ways to skin the digital cat uh, here is another way there's so many ways to do the same thing via code uh, they're all right and they're all wrong the thing is that if it does what you want and the code that you wrote that you wrote works, that was the right way. Now, yes, there could be more efficient code or more readable code or, or whatever, but if the code works, you understand what it does, it's the right code. If someone else tells you, no, you should do it like this, that way works as well. If, if, it, if you then learn and understand that way, okay, that's another way to do it. There's no wrong answer. So what I'm saying is this time we'll use an if else. We could use another case, another switch that is, switch and ask again, and then we have true and false again. We could do that again. But this time I'm going to do an if else. And if else, uh, confirming a second time to delete or not. So uh, we're going to do inside of the if block. This is the part where they are. Uh, this is the part where they are confirming for the second time to delete. So we'll say second confirmation about to delete. The else will be the the second time that they that they uh, had cold feet. So we'll say uh, second time. Um, how should we say that? Second time chickening out. Sure. Second time, I said, never mind. Um, it's within the second time, that is. If they cancel the first time, they cancel it. But if they go within the second level of it, OK, this is the second level where they said, never mind. So the possibility uh, regarding here can be uh, another confirm, another confirm pop-up. Because what happens when a person interacts with confirm, they click OK, and what is automatically sent back to the system is true. When they uh, cancel the button, they automatically it automatically kicks back a cancel. So there's a true, uh, there's a confirm or a cancel, there's a true or a false. So this, these conditional statements, especially if else, is looking for a true statement. If what is in these parentheses is true, automatically, do the first block. Or else, it must be false, do the second block. So we can ask confirm again, because that will give a true or a false. And then we can keep it simple. We can just say, are you sure? Confirm will pop up. They click OK. True automatically comes back. Therefore, this part will happen. Second confirmation, about to delete. Are you sure pops up? Cancel. Well, cancel's a false goes to else, second time, chickened out. Go ahead and uh, save it and run it and test that. Then we will finally add the code to delete the database. We have to do a little bit of code to set it up and confirm and all of that and save the user from themselves. Uh, but then the actual deletion is a pouch command, which we'll do in just a moment. 
So this right here is just JavaScript logic. The actual command to delete the database is coming in a moment. Let me confirm mine so far. I'll beta test it a little bit. in my console good I'm going to go to options I'm gonna click delete I get the first confirmation I click OK get a second confirmation are you sure I'm gonna cancel this time I'm, I'm scared so I'll cancel second time chickening out okay so it canceled the second time I'm gonna try it again I'm going to delete the collection I'm gonna click OK second time are you sure I'm gonna click OK this time and it says there's second time confirmation about to delete. It's not going to delete yet until we write the code, but it looks like our, our two layer confirmation seems to be working. You can, of course, add a third layer of confirmation to say, are you really, really, really sure? With uh, sprinkles on top. You know, we can ask one more time inside of this if. I won't, but we could add one more. And we can keep going as many times as we want. Keep asking inside of the true part. We can, for fun, put another switch back in and ask it via switches. Or we could have done from the very beginning, we could have done it instead of a switch as an if-else. And then inside of the second level of confirmation, a switch. That's fine. We could have done two if-elses, two switches, either or. Again, I'm showing here, even though I have the project complete, and even though you know it works and all of that, there's many ways to do this. If you find a way that you like better, go ahead and do it. Show me. It might be cool. I might do it in a future version of the class. But there's no wrong answer. If it does what you need it to do, and you understand what it does, to actually delete the database, we have a pouch command called destroy. Very dramatic. So db dot destroy. Pouch db method to delete the database from the device. Since I'm testing in the web browser, it'll delete in the web browser. If I'm when I'm testing this on the device, it'll delete from the device. We don't have any data replication at the moment so once we delete this it'll be gone we're not backing this up on a server we're not putting it in the cloud we're not setting up an undelete at this point so when it's gone it's gone but like with most but like with most um, pouch commands methods so there's options comma a callback function there's really no options that you pass in to destroy it just it just does it but there is a callback function as we've seen over and over of failure and success so inside of the parentheses of destroy we have the usual callback function we then have to deal with if failure or else success. Well, this is the part where, as I've done before, I'm going to break apart the curly braces there, add my note. I've got to check if that uh, failure occurred or else it didn't.
So db dot destroy uh, we we have as usual uh, either a successful uh, operation of successful completion of destroy or not. So we've got if failure versus or else success. End of that. End of that. Give ourselves some console here. Error deleting pouch. What is that failure object that it's kicking back to me? The opposite pouch deleted. And what? Out of curiosity, what is that success object that it gives back to me? Well, this is for the um, this is for the um, the U this is for the developer. This console output, as we've done over and over, for the user, if there's some sort of error happening in deleting here. Um, there's not much the user can do. There's something wrong with our app. Uh, and we'll do this smarter later. But for the moment, we'll, we'll pop up a basic alert message to the user saying something. Let's say error, space backlash, new line, contact the developer. And then you can put your email here. Very user-friendly feedback to to our users. So if there's some sort of failure, it'll pop up. There's not much for the user to be able to do for us. Then we need to figure out what's this, what's happening with this error. Else is that is there's a successful deletion. We will make an alert and say database deleted. Or not database, uh, collection deleted. You know, whatever uh, user friendly, your comics, oh, we'll do it like this. Your mom threw out your comics successfully. So this whole destroy did what it was designed to do, which was delete the database completely. So when I go then back to the screen to start to start my collection again, I'm going to get an error because I'm going to try to put a comic into a database that no longer exists at this point. If I were to quit the app completely, come back in, it'd be fine. Because when you every time you open the app, it initializes the database. It checks if there's a database, connect to it. If there's no database, create one. Well, from this point of the user's experience, I've deleted the database and I'm trying to save comics to a database that doesn't exist. So we need to reinitialize the database. Hey, don't we have a function that initializes databases? Yeah, init db. old database is gone, so reinitialize a new one. So while all of that is happening, the database has been cleaned out. If I were to go over to view comics, the comics would still be there because What's in the HTML visible part of the app is one thing, and what's behind the scenes via JavaScript is another. So I've reinitialized the database. 
but I haven't refreshed the screen to show there's no more comics. How do we refresh the screen to show the comics in the table? I think I heard someone say, function show comics prep. You are correct. We are going to redraw the table, which is empty. No more comics. Then redraw the table with no comics. Let's see. Let's see this in action. Save all and run. Okay, so before I do anything, if I go look at my application, I have comics. By sequence, I have I have stuff there. Console. If I go up to delete, delete collection. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to delete everything, so I'm going to go for it. Delete. Your mom threw out your comic successfully. Okay, that pops up. Stuff then shows up there, perhaps. Um, init db is running again. Great. Redraw the table. There's nothing in the data. Great. So when I close options and view comics, the table is empty. And then when I go view at application, index db pouch by sequence, nothing. So it's gone. Now, if I go back to save comic, I'm going to start again. Save. Pops up. I have one object in the database. I can view it in the screen. I can view it in the application. I might have to refresh this application view. New comic. But you should have the full capability here then of deleting everything to start over. I added Batman 333 first, and then I added Batman 1 second. It should have also organized it that way, because based on the ID of the data, BAT1 um, is before BAT333, so it should have put it in order there. Third comic. Ant-Man number 99, saving that, so I've saved Ant-Man third, but when I view, it should be alphabetically first, and we can get pretty fancy uh, using <coughs> jQuery mobile to, to filter this. Uh, there's a very cool widget in jQuery mobile 
where, where it will dynamically filter the data. For the moment, it's just a simple table. Um, once we do the simple part, we could do the advanced part. But I'm able to save a comic. I'm able to delete everything. It should uh, work on my device as well. We'll, uh, once those once those are working, then we need to deal with viewing the full data, the full info of the comic, editing a comic in case of misspellings and stuff, deleting individual comics. I don't want to delete the whole database. I want to delete one comic. We still have those three operations. device remember it's also useful to use uh, Chrome to debug your device sometimes you need to stop the connection between Visual Studio and the device and then inspect your device I guess sometimes you don't get sometimes you don't get the preview but I am getting the console output there One thing that I just thought of, um, emoji. I'm getting a pop-up. I'm about to save Catman. It's popping up. Hey, why not use the emoji, the cat emoji? Sure. So, okay, let me try that. Well, I haven't actually tested that. So maybe there's a title of a book with an emoji. Number four. Let's see what happens there. Comic saved. View comic. <laughs> so yeah, it's saving. How does it look in the database? <laughs> Doesn't exactly display it, but it does show it. It's obviously got some sort of character code internally. But yeah, I can save emoji in this thing as well, I guess. If you try to delete the database and there's nothing there, would it give an error? Let me check it right now. So I'm going to delete what I have so far. So delete collection. And pull up the console. OK, so it's popping up. Are you sure? I'm going to click OK deleted okay everything's deleted so at the moment I have um, I have no comics in the database let me go back to home I'm gonna try to delete again delete collection I'm going to confirm that twice second confirmation no it doesn't seem to cause any problem uh, deleting the collect deleting an empty collection technically is not a is not any sort of problem because what we're doing is deleting the database object. Inside of the object is nothing. 
So what we're doing is deleting the object, which has nothing, which should be valid because the object exists, it just has nothing in it. We are able to delete something that's empty. Yeah, we could do that. We can check, is there data in the database first? Then when it sees that, say, no need to delete, it's already empty. Yeah, so we have several ways to, to be even smarter about it. That's, that's a good idea. They're testing it. Well, what if I'm trying to delete something empty? You know, you run into those sorts of questions as you test this, and then you might need a solution for it. But that's a good point.